What's up everybody, I'm Raf, and this is Godzilla, or Zilly for short, who is our Sudan plated lizard. Uh, I believe Zilly is a female. Yeah, kind of hard to tell, I'm not going to act like I know for sure, but today this video is all about how we built this plywood enclosure so that he, she, me, Wombo can live the rest of their life happily. So we're going to talk about how we did that today, but first... Uh, make sure if you like reptile content and if that's the kind of thing you're watching on YouTube You make sure you smish like a smish subscribe button Here we go first thing I want to say is this is going to be kind of like a quick overview of how we did it. It's not going to be step by step with measurements or anything like that. If you guys want to see that, we got more builds to do. Might get a little more practice and then I can feel comfortable doing that for you guys. So if that's something you want, let me know in the comments and uh, we'll see, huh? Zilly is a roughly 19 inch lizard, right? So um, as we talked about in our bearded dragon enclosure size video, we want to shoot for twice the length of the lizard long, right? If we call this side to side long and as long as the lizard deep. So we went with a four foot by two foot by two foot. Comes out to about 120 gallons and uh, it's the same thing that Bartaby's in. And, uh, you know, she's pretty much the same size as Bartaby. So it's going to work out just right. So the majority of the build was done with maple plywood, a uh, half inch thick. And so the first step that we took was that we buckled the bottom and the back and the sides together and we left the top and the front open so that way we can work on the background. And once we had those sides fastened together, we went ahead and painted over the whole inside of it with dry lock, which is basically masonry waterproofer. This is just to keep the wood safe from moisture. Sudan plated lizards need a bit higher humidity than a lot of other species. So we wanna make sure that wood's not gonna rot out on us. And then pretty much for the same reason, we sealed the seams with silicone this way it's just kind of, you know, sealed. So no water is going to go leaking out, getting to the other sides of the plywood that we don't want it to. And then we're using this two inch thick. Oh, she's got some shit. I'm taking off some shit. Then we use this two inch thick insulation board. You know, sometimes you can find it pink, green. There's a bunch of different brands, but it's just two inch thick insulation foam. And these were going to serve as her rock ledges that we see here. And we secured those in place with silicone as well. And once we had a layout that we thought looked nice and everything was pinned in place, we used expanding spray foam to fill in the rest of the background that was not going to be those rock ledges. And a lot of people will carve out the spray foam after it hardens. Um, in my opinion, and this is totally taste preference, right? You like chocolate or vanilla, it doesn't really matter. But um, this way... When you cut into that foam, it kind of looks more like foam, you know, it kind of, it's porous, it has holes all up in it, but um, we thought this rugged, uneven looking surface would be fine. This being, they're not necessarily fossorial, meaning, you know, burrowing, but uh, they do burrow and they like rocky outcrops. Leaving the spray foam this way gave us a, a more, like a, like a cave kind of feel, you know, like it looks like a bunch of rocks and dirt maybe. And once the spray foam was all done, so we knew how much of those rock ledges we were really gonna be seeing, I took a hot knife to those foam board pieces to not only carve them out to make them look more like rock, a little more naturalistic, but it also hardens it up. It hardens the surface up when you apply that much heat and uh, that way they won't be as affected by her little claws. Next up, we tinted the dry lock with a uh, charcoal colored cement color, and this way we could apply a nice dark base coat to all of the foam to prepare for our next layers. And this real dark layer serves to kind of, everywhere that the next coats of paint aren't going to get, it gives it that kind of depth, like, you know, it's just kind of deeper in there, it looks like that, it looks more shadowy, so we really like how that turned out. And then after that dark base coat, we went ahead and over where the rock ledges would be, we applied maybe a lighter gray to it to kind of give some more depth of color to those rock ledges. And then we went over with the rest with brown to make it look 
you know, I don't know, dirty, look more like tree bark maybe. I mean, these guys definitely aren't climbing trees with these little stubby legs, but uh, you know, to give that natural, the natural feel, right Zilly? And in the meantime, we put this uh, door frame together. As you can see, this isn't plywood. It's a couple other wood boards. Um, I don't know, this kind of just provided a little more structural integrity, you know, half inch thick plywood. It can be strong, but it, it kind of leaves that, uh, it's open for interpretation, you know what I mean, depending on how you handle it. But this uh, more hardwood frame gave us, uh, it's about three quarters of an inch thick, and it gave us some, some nice, more sturdy ri rigidity, rigidity. I think that's a word, rigid, more rigid. And this was just put together with, uh, I used pocket holes to screw these together because of obviously the angle that they're at, it'd be hard to get a screw six inches up into the next piece. But, um, you know, the pocket holes also help with structural integrity. And I just got pooped on. Well, it looks like she's done for now, but, um, so yeah, I mean, we're just going to roll with it. So this piece is a uh, much thicker, much wider, um, cause they do like a good amount of substrate to be able to dig around when they want to. Also, again, with that humidity, that deeper substrate is going to hold more humidity. In this meantime, we also drilled a couple holes in the piece that would eventually go on top so that we can mount lights more easily inside the enclosure. And then of course, dry locked what would serve as the inside of that top, the ceiling, so to speak. And now we're getting into a little bit of a, a electrical. Like I had to do a little bit of wiring on my own. I'm not gonna tell you guys how to do that. The only house I'm comfortable with being responsible for burning down is my own, right? So <laughs> I'm no electrician by trade. Um, it seems to have worked out well this first time that I'm trying it. Um, so again, that's another thing I'd like to get some more practice with before I give you guys an in detail version, but you can definitely find it on YouTube. Hey, YouTube University, right? You can learn anything on this platform. So, so what, you know, I Google it, you know, a little bit of in, in my privacy and stuff, but uh, there are some good parts to it. And I'd say learning anything in the world on YouTube is one of them. So if you want to do electrical, hey man, figure it out. But I will say that I, I used a mounting bracket uh, this way uh, it keeps the cords inside of that more than just having like a rinky dinky cord with exposed wires barely sticking into the, you know, into the enclosure could get tugged out. And also we used a cable connector for that reason, which is just this little piece that keeps the cord from tugging back out. And then, um, you know, if you're wondering just copious amounts of electrical tape on top of where we actually wired it this way, even if something did go a little bit wrong, the electricity doesn't have a easy line to anything really, it's blocked off by that electrical tape, which electrical tape's good for that, fancy enough that they created it for it, huh? Hmm, 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 hang on, poop more. And if you are using what cord I used, I literally bought an extension cord and chopped off the part where you plug cords into it. It's pretty much it. Next up was mounting this brilliant fluorescent fixture that I could only find one place to get it quick enough really during this build and that was on uh, walmart.com they sell it as a black light but it's a t8 24 accepts a 24 inch bulb but it's a little long i think 31 inches but uh t8 fixture for a 24 inch bulb and that was absolutely perfect and finally as far as wood goes it was just installing that door frame and then also screwing the top on uh with the lights already attached and uh, basically just piecing it together to finish the job. And next up, we mounted these aluminum U-channels uh, to serve as door tracks. A little thing here, and I saw this, I, I'll put a card to the video right here because this guy gets some credit in my book. I was looking at these plastic sliding door tracks and they were, you know, more expensive. They were gonna take a long time to ship. I was like, there's gotta be an easier way to do this. This guy came up with the idea. So the key to getting the doors able to come in and out, right? To be able to put them in, take them out easily for cleaning and things like that. This top one has to be deeper than this bottom one, right? And his way to go about it was he just bought the two U channels, same size, same depth. And then, uh, you know, you can also find aluminum stripping and he put a couple pieces in here at the bottom and I made sure to measure the glass from the bottom of one track just to the top of this other one so that when these uh, it's two layers of aluminum strip are in there, it can easily go all the way up in there, sit in there nicely without falling out from the top and come out just as easily, right? You lift it up a little bit higher on the top and you can just tilt it out. 
great idea. Whoever you are, good job. And last up was just adding the glass, right? And um, we went with regular glass and we couldn't find any in a quick enough time frame that would be the right thickness, about a quarter inch thick. This is a half inch for, uh, track here. So we were looking for a quarter inch acrylic, but it turns out that enough acrylic for this would have been like 75 bucks. And I didn't want to pay that. So what we did was we just got standard like replacement glass, but we ran foam tape on the top and the bottom of the piece that would be the back piece so that they're not just kind of clanking up against each other. And that foam takes up that rest of that wasted space. And that way the doors are more snug in there, less play, less in and out. So you know, if you want to, hey, if you're trying to save a, save a buck, you know, go well, ahead. Hey. And as far as the substrate goes, uh, we're using a topsoil base and a lot of moistened coconut core in there. Uh, we try to stay away from the reptile branded one because you'll spend five times the amount on if you just find coconut core. It's just coconut core. Make sure no additives because sometimes it's used as a seed starter. You don't really want plant food in there when you're putting it in a reptile enclosure. So, but other than that, uh, topsoil, which is cheap, again, no additives, plain topsoil, right? This one had peat moss in it, but peat moss is okay. You don't want plant food in there. So we got topsoil, we got coconut core, and then just a little bit of play sand. Uh, I think this will help it hold the burrow maybe even a little more if Zilly does decide to want to, uh, you know, be like Elon Musk and dig tunnels under LA, so. And then guys, that's all there really is to it. So I'd like to take a second to talk about her and what an amazing little lizard this is, even though it pooped all over me. She's just amazing. So she is wild caught. Um, I didn't have her imported. Uh, my friend I got her from didn't have her imported. She was here already. Most of these guys, these Sudan plated lizards are wild caught uh, that we see in captivity. I guess they're pretty hard to breed. So, um, hey, maybe in the future, if I could figure something out how to do that, but, um, you know, for now, just my experience with her, uh, very, you know, high food drive, which is fun, right? Um, if you keep reptiles, that's something that a lot of people like. We like watching them eat. We like watching them hunt, chase food down, uh, which is really cool. To that point, they're omnivorous, right? So you'll feed them their salads most of the time as adults. But then you also got your bug options for other times. What you're seeing me do here is I'm basically just trying to desensitize her. Uh, she definitely doesn't like handling, but she does way better once she's out of the enclosure. You should, guys should have seen, I should have filmed it, me taking her out of the enclosure that she was in, her, her temporary enclosure. And yeah, she wasn't having it. She was smacking me with this tail. It seems like they don't whip you with the tail like to use it as a weapon. It seems like the tail whipping is more a byproduct of them just completely losing their cool you know and their tail just does that uh and and if not she's not very accurate you know she never really hit me with her tail she was just flopping it around maybe just hoping that i would leave her alone or uh i don't know what really but but the temperament especially for a wild caught creature i mean look you know you're looking at it we've had her out eh, maybe maybe 15 minutes now so obviously she's more calm than when i first got her out but um I don't know, really no problems. I don't think they can drop their tail. Also like a really cool looking lizard too, right? This is why my friend named her Godzilla with these scales, you know, these very rough armored scales, which is pretty amazing. And they also have this ridge going down the side so that they can easily, even though they have all this intense armor, they can easily breathe and move and do whatever they have to do. So, um, and she's never tried to bite even when she's really upset and trying to get away. She's never even opened her mouth at me. So, you know, no complaints with this little one here. Now I'm going to take you a little closer to the enclosure and kind of talk you out or talk out what I was thinking and, uh, and then we'll get her in there. You know, she's ready to go. This rock ledge here, um, I decided that this would be the, the preferred or encouraged basking area. A little further off the ground so I didn't have to get a light that was too crazy to heat it up which is about a it's around 120 degrees yep 120 116 118 I read 125 is okay for them I don't think 120 is gonna be too bad she can get there if she wants to um, and aside from that it also kind of serves as a hide here on the hot side so I didn't have to put too much stuff in there but she can kind of wedge herself back there and feel nice and secure 
Uh, of course, we got the water bowl. Again, they like a humidity, you know, maybe around 60-70% uh, African species, but not a desert species for sure by any means. As far as this branch goes, I don't know how they are at climbing at all, really. She was in a one-foot high during uh, the beginning of her quarantine here in her temporary enclosure, so I guess we'll see how she likes to climb on the branch, but it's there if she wants it. Another piece of cork bark there in the back, so if she wants to tuck herself away, she can. And another little rock hide right here, dead center. So I think she's going to like it. And now what we're going to do is we're going to put Zilly in there. Well, let's just have a look at Zilly quick, hey? Look at that. Beautiful. Yeah, having a little trouble shedding here. I didn't want to put too much pressure on her. Seems to be coming right off. Maybe she'll just throw herself in the water and she'll be good. But aside from that, yeah, we're going to get her in there and then I'm going to feed her some crickets. Maybe see if that will make her like her new enclosure more. So let's see how we Honestly, guys, this is a big part of why I hate crickets. The crickets smell way worse than the lizard poop that is all over me. So, anyway. See, she might be a little too shy to eat for now. Which is okay, I don't blame her. I haven't been handling her much since we got her, so that might have been a big deal for her. Oh, one's going right for her face, though. No? It diverted. She was not doing it for the camera right now. So she's just got to settle in a little more. Now, look, again, guys, uh, I push to... I don't want to make videos just to make videos and spurt nonsense out of my face, which I have a tendency to do sometimes. I'm just trying not to do it on this platform, right? So, um... That's again why I didn't give you a detailed step-by-step, -step, like a cut list for what you need exactly for this enclosure or how to do the electrical. But um, as I practice more, which I plan on doing because I want all my enclosures to be nice, full setups like this. And uh, as I get more practice doing that, if you guys do want a more detailed version, write in the comments, baby. We're gonna, I'm gonna read it. I'm going to say thanks, and I'm going to take that to heart, and I'm going to get you guys one soon. Other than that, this video is really just highlighting this really cool little lizard that uh, we didn't even plan on getting, really, but uh, it turned out that we did have what we needed for it, uh, minus a full-size enclosure. It was in a four-foot long by two-foot deep enclosure, but only one foot high. So uh, when when she got here, we were like, all right, let's, let's do this the right way. You know what I mean? We got some UV going. We got some heat going. We got a lizard in there. It's awesome. But with all that being said, you know, um, we think Zilly's a really cool lizard. And if you do too, let us know that in the comments too. And we're going to get you more Sudan plated lizard content, um, which is something I'm excited to do because there are species that's not as pot. You know, of course, I love my bearded dragon. Let's be honest, there are enough Bearded Dragon videos on YouTube, you know, um, but I'll still make videos with Barta because I love her and uh, I have things to say as well on it. But, um, you know, it's not as it's not as groundbreaking per se as as this stuff is. And she was looking at a cricket, but she was too afraid to get out of the rock. So, yeah, guys, it's cool to be working with some more uh, unique species and um and it's gonna be exciting to make content on them because there's not too much of it out there so with that said if you guys think our enclosure sucks then uh you know let us know that in the comments too if you think it's cool uh let us know smash like on video smash subscribe that's all i got to say so thank you guys so much for watching uh again i'm raf that's zilly and we'll see you next time